So everybody, welcome back to uh, The Office, another Q of the Day. And this one is a pretty good one. Um, and it's one of those things I don't really think about too much because I just kind of throw that this term out there, which is do your own research, do your own research. And the question actually is from Ian. And Ian says, hey, Rob, I keep asking this question uh, to multiple other YouTubers, but no answer yet. But everyone always says BYOR, do your own research. But what does that entail besides these videos from different influencers? Is there any specific route you could suggest to research potential tokens? So that's that, that is the first part. And, this, and it was a pretty great question because it really makes you delve into the really nitty gritty of it. And so before I could actually get a chance to answer it, a uh, person answers it says, uh, it means what does the project do? Who does it? Is it useful? Does the team have a good track record? Are there any enough users, partnerships? Does it have a future? Is there something out there? And, and, and they go on and on and on, which was a fantastic answer. And then Ian comes back and says, that's great. What the heck is that? I don't know where to find this information. I don't know where it all is. I don't have time to do this thing. So I was like, this is a pretty great question. So um, what I did was I reached out to uh, history because when I got in in 2017, uh, there was a guy, a gentleman, by the name of Ian Bellina. And he had a pretty great spreadsheet and he pretty much laid it all out and he had the ICOs and it was a super exciting time. Now, uh, the thing, thing with that is that Ian did a lot of research and it was good stuff. It was just moving into it, not all of Ian's pr predictions panned out because who the heck is perfect? So what I did was I reached out to Ian and he said, he came on, he's here right now. Welcome Ian. And uh, he's going to show us. Glad to be here. Thank you, Ian. He is going to show us the methods that he used all the way back then to find out all this information that uh, Tim Pone is actually at, uh, asking. He's going to show us an old way and he's going to show us a new way. So, and then we're going to get into some other things and talk about it. So, Ian, thanks for coming on. So, how did you find all this information? How can how can Ian answer Ian's question? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so the market has changed. Getting lots of data in the crypto space is very tough, especially with new products launching very quickly. And here at Tokenmetrics, we've built a platform that is data-driven. We go out there and we, we basically bring both quantitative data points from platforms like CoinMarketCap and others. So investors can go through and analyze and have all the data in one place. Then we also have our team of humans from Goldman Sachs and, and my background at, at IBM Watson going through and building methods for evaluating cryptocurrencies from both fundamental analysis perspective. So questions, as you mentioned, uh, do they have customers, the team, the background, the marketing, reputation, and then also doing deep code reviews uh, and going through the code and trying to find out, is this actually a good project from a purely developer perspective? Plus also having TA, because TA in crypto matters a lot from a technical analysis perspective. So we bring all this together into one platform that makes it very easy for anybody without even, even having to, to be a beginner to quickly understand and do their own research very quickly in a self-serve manner. Okay, so Ian, so, so let's, first of all, let's break it down. So you've got a platform now called Token Metrics, right? That's a paid service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's some people who are like, I'm not paying. You know, I, don't, I got plenty of time, they want to find it. Can you lay it out in a simple way of how to find this information that you used to do back in 2017 to find out like the basics? Like where would they go? Yeah. How would they find this stuff? So break that down first. Yeah. So if you, want, if you want to do your own research for free, it's definitely available. The first place I would begin is a company website. Go to the website, find the white paper, go to the white paper, read the abstract. And that typically gives you a nice summary on, on what the project is. Um, then go through, just scan the white paper and just kind of see, okay, does this look like something put together in a week or something somebody actually spent time going through in a very thorough manner, mm -hmm. fleshing out their idea. And then typically I do like to read most of the white paper. Uh, if it's something that's very, very technical, then maybe I'll just skim to the parts that matter the most, so, such, such as the use case. Uh, if they're talking about technology and code, I'll probably just leave that to, to our development team. But anybody can go through and skim or just read a white paper to make sure they understand what the idea is about. Then I'll go through and look at the back end of the team. Now, in the crypto space, sometimes they won't put that on the website. So right. what I do is I go on LinkedIn, put in the company name, mm -hmm. and I go through and look at the management team. So the CEO, uh, anybody in the C-suite role, the developers, and I look for good social signals of people who've had past success. So whether somebody has worked at a well-known company 
So if somebody was a developer at Amazon or Google or Facebook for five years, that's a good social signal that, okay, this person is pretty competent. Or if somebody has worked with a top 25 blockchain project, so if somebody was a Bitcoin core developer, or if, if a person worked for Ethereum for two years, that's a good sign. Uh, and then I would say in the last few years, other good signals have been, do they have good backing? Do they have well-known crypto funds backing them, such as Anderson Horowitz, uh, Coinbase Ventures, uh, big funds, like uh, Novogratz, big funds with lots of money at risk to lose and with very large reputations to lose, right? So because they have teams that go through and do very thorough in-depth due diligence. So that, that in a way is a proxy for a retail investor or trader to do their own research as well. Uh, and then also Got it. going through their GitHub, right? I like to look at projects that have open source code. If a project is promising the moon, but they have code that's not open source, that's a warning sign. Or if a project is promising the moon and they haven't launched anything at all, and if you go to the GitHub, it's just a smart contract and that's it. And I, that's a, a big warning sign. So for example, uh, a w week back, I was looking at a project that lots of people were very bullish on. I went to look at, at their website. The entire team were just marketers. People from mm -hmm. affiliate marketing world, right, right, right. digital marketing world, no technology people. I said, okay, this to me looks like a pump and dump right? because I don't see any technical acumen here. So how is this project going to survive two years down the road? Right. If there's, uh, no, if there's no CTO, a technical person, anybody who's been involved in blockchain, but marketers, well, marketers can drive it, yeah. sales can drive it, yeah. but for the longevity, it will fail. So that was a good, okay, so I get you. I yeah. can see where you're going with that one. Right. Uh, and then the community. Products with large communities, that matters a lot. But one metric I think is not looked at a lot, especially for, for products already trading on exchanges, is what I call the liquidity ratio or turnover ratio. So if you take the daily trading volume and you divide by the market cap, that will tell you how liquid a project is. So for example, if a project has a daily trading volume of 10 million, and a market cap of 5 million, right? <laughs> that yeah. means the average person holding that coin is trading it twice, meaning that lots of speculators are in that coin, people who want hodlers. So a good ratio gotcha. I like to have is between 10% to 50% because that tells you one is liquid. So I personally don't like to invest into any project with a ratio lower than 10% because that tells you that token is not liquid. Right? So for example, if it has a trading value of 1 million, a market cap of 20 million, it's a very illiquid coin. Right? So that the goal is to find products with good liquidity because in crypto, the world can be pulled underneath you very fast. Right? We've had products, especially during Black, uh, Black Thursday in March, products mm -hmm. crashed 30%, 40%. And if you're in a project that's very illiquid, that basically becomes zero. Right? This, this also comes from my own personal experience investing uh, in private sales of products that have no, no liquidity. Yeah. Liquidity can drive very, very fast. So gotcha. all, the, all those are different factors I look at. Uh, from a technical analysis perspective, that's all just purely automated TA. Uh, from a code perspective, I mentioned GitHub. If you go to GitHub, anybody can view how many people follow a project on GitHub, right? So right. you have number of stars, number of forks. So this can show actual engagement from developers. Now, it is possible to possibly gain those metrics, but for the most part, it adds more confidence if you can kind of go through and see and see how how often, for example, is the code updated. If a project hasn't been updated in one year, it's probably not a good project, right? For example, Litecoin. Litecoin is a pretty popular project, but there isn't too much development activity on their on their GitHub, and it, it basically seems like one guy just posting code over and over. So over, right? you want to see, yeah. So you want, want to see teams that are actively updating the project on GitHub and to see lots of community involvement. That, that's also a good sign. Okay, so let me, let me, let me try to summarize. There's a lot of information, thank you. So we look at the, first we go to the website, we look at the white paper, we go over it, see what does it do, uh, does it have a functionality, and maybe does it have competition. And then we take a look at the team, which may be on the website or not. If it's not, we go to LinkedIn. We go to LinkedIn, we take a look at it. If it's a bunch of marketers, we know it's bad. If it's a bunch of people, well, CTOs, technical people, and marketers, and accountants, and everything else, we know it's probably a, a good type of thing. We go to we go to GitHub. We make sure there's an actually an activity level, and there's actually a good following. And then lastly, you talked about the liquidity versus the uh, market cap, right? 
So if it, if it has a yeah. large market cap and figure that out again, again, large market cap, but there is a lot of so, washing around. W- so with the liquidity ratio, we look at the liquidity daily ratio. trading volume. Yeah. Divided by the market cap. Because if a project has more, if, if the average person is trading it twice a day, it's just traders in there. And once, once, once the trade is over, they exit and people are left holding bags, right? So you want to find projects with yeah. very good products that are liquid, but have lots of hardware involved. Gotcha. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense. And that kind of breaks it down and answers the other Ian's question, do your own research. So it's a lot of stuff, but it can be done, right? You did it all the time in 2017 when the ICOs were there. Okay. Before we start to talk about token metrics, let me, I'm going to just lay it out there because I know there's going to be a lot of comments. Ian's a shill. Why'd you have a shill on? He does nothing but shill. So talk to us about what happened in 2017 moving forward and, what, and maybe the, some of the things that you learned. Because let's be honest, we're not yeah. the same people we are two, three years ago. So take it away. Let's hear. So my perspective on that is I built up a large following for being fully transparent. Right? I had a spreadsheet that was open source. Anybody could go there and see my trades, my investments, my sure. methods as to why I was investing in, in projects. Right? So in 2017, I became the poster child for ICOs. And the ICO <laughs> bubble popped. Being the poster child kind of came with, with those, I, I would say, down, downside effects of me also kind of having my image kind of tarnished. Right? And yes, right, there were projects that I invested in and that would, would end up being great projects, ended up being scams, right? So uh, that part I definitely do accept. But one thing I've learned as an investor is to just learn from, learn from your mistakes. And I've learned that the biggest mistakes have actually had the most growth, right? So token metrics came from my biggest mistakes because we had the system, the spreadsheet, and we thought we had all the data. Yeah. But one thing I've learned is it's basically a cat and mouse game. The, the, the market is always adapting. It's always changing. There are some people out there who have bad intentions, who try to game investors' systems. And I knew that we had to evolve and, and basically just improve our due diligence. So I ended up investing over $2 million of my own money, yeah. p- putting t- together the, the right team, doing the research to build the t- technology, the AI, and all this, bringing people like Bill on from, from Goldman Sachs, bringing on developers from Goldman Sachs. So to me, my mistakes, uh, I've learned from them, right? And if you go through and look at my track record, it's still pretty good, right? The success rate we had publicly, right, from getting into the private sale of chain, like uh, mm-hmm. even products like synthetics, uh, finding products really like that, like like, like Icon, right? Uh, even now, recently, Helium Network, right? So mm-hmm. our research was good, but it's not perfect. And I think people were under the assumption that it was perfect, and I think that's something we've also learned in terms of risk management. And the main point of this platform was now people can do their own research and not just blindly follow me, but also go through and bring everything they would need in one platform from the technical analysis to now even adding artificial intelligence. So working at IBM Watson for four years, one thing I learned is AI is the future. And it's now come to a point where I'm willing to admit that, okay, humans have limitations. True. AI can look at so many more different data points and find out patterns in the data that humans overlook. So I will say this, uh, people will even call me a shill. Like I just, I, I just talked about a, a notebook uh, recently. And they're like, ah, you shill, how dare you? Look, if it's a good product and it fits your needs and it's going to be good for you, it's going to be okay. So for Ian, I thanks for being honest and just, you know, saying, Hey, I made some mistakes. Cause these days, how often do you hear people say, you know what? I made a mistake. I'm not hundred percent perfect. It's so rare. It's so rare. So it's, it's amazing when someone says like, you know, Hey, I made a mistake, but I learned from those mistakes. And I put that into uh, another project that I truly believe in, like to- like you're talking about token metrics, what you did there. And so it makes total sense of like, Hey, I'm not getting perfect. Learn from mistakes. Here I go with token metrics. And this is what I've learned. And this is where it's a better project. So great. Okay. Makes sense to me. So let's walk through it. Show me all about it. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. And so this is why I, I, you know, I had you on to go like, here's the manual method. If you want to go through all that stuff and that's fine. You can do that. If you got a lot of time, that's cool. If you're somebody who like, I want to invest, I don't have a lot of time. 
I want someone else to do the hard work for me. This is for you. So I'm going to give everybody options. And that's what makes the world go round, right? All right. Okay, Ian, so uh, we're back at uh, Token Metrics. And again, you can use whatever uh, uh, different type of process you want. The manual one that Ian just talked about, or the one we're going to go over now. It depends on how much time you have and effort and all that good stuff. So uh, Ian uh, gave me a little uh, quick pass. So let's take a look inside under the hood. And what is this all about? Ian, take it away. So this is the homepage when you log in. This shows the to Token Metrics indices. So taking all our ratings that we've done on different projects and building model portfolios that people could could, could follow it's because not everyone has time to go out there and spend hours a day researching projects so if somebody wants to build a diversified portfolio based on their preferred investment style this is where they would go to so if you go down here for example let's say you're a day trader and you want to know what coins to trade so if you just choose trader daily okay and choose technical analysis click submit got it so it's going to go through take our technical analysis ratings and find 10 coins and build a portfolio around that and then everything is fully transparent and logged so if you scroll down it, it gives you a pie chart so this pie chart is allocated based on on the grades for technical analysis we have different metrics that 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 quants use such as sharp ratio so tuna ratio max drawdown the returns then if you go down it also compares the return of this index uh, in the last two months or whatever time frame versus bitcoin so telling you whether or not you you, be, you would make more money trading this versus trading bitcoin okay and then every single trade at the bottom is logged as well so if you go down there all the transactions are there right so the price the entry the roi Okay, so it looks like like this is actually this is actually done automated wise, or is this is actually what you guys do, and then you log it, and then so people can see it. No, so this is fully automated by our system. This is okay. based on the technical analysis rates that our models go through and and basically pick up. Everything is based on machine learning. Um, then, uh, for example, let's switch now. We'll go back to the top. Okay. So change the time. Yeah, change the time horizon to weekly. Okay. And now choose price predictions. Okay. And click submit. And now I was going to take our price prediction models uh, from AI and build a portfolio based on what tokens it thinks will go up. So go down. Ah. So this is the portfolio based on the price predictions. So if somebody wants to follow just pure, purely based on TA, if somebody wants to follow purely based on the price predictions, they can achieve the same thing here as well. Uh, and then same thing, the returns are logged there. Okay. And then... Same thing can also be done with a value investor. Let's say somebody is a hodler, they want to hold for one year. That they would just mean. change the switch to, to value investor. Okay. They would change to annual, to annual, annually. Okay. And balanced approach and just click submit and it will go through and create a portfolio based on that. Now, one thing to note, the time horizon is how often the index will rebalance. So something that's annual will only update once a year. So it's for somebody who wants to target long-term capital gains tax treatment. So meaning they won't be getting the latest and greatest coins, but these are projects our, our ratings think have good long-term staying power. Long-term. Right? So projects like Ethereum, Matic, Cosmos, Maker, Dash, Bitcoin. Now, so while all this is great, right, this kind of shows you the speed to value. Mm -hmm. Internally, we've been testing a new grade that we plan to launch called Quant Grade. So this is taking quantitative, quantitative data points, over 54 data points, and building a portfolio around them. Metrics I mentioned earlier, like max drawdown, all these different numbers. So for perspective, a good investor, uh, sorry, a good trader has an accuracy or success rate or win rate of about 50 to 55%, which is pretty good. If you consider that 80% of traders lose money, right? There's lots of academic, academic research proving this, that 80% of traders lose money. Right. The ones who make money, their success rate is about 50 to 55%. So for transparency, our models, uh, the overall grade accuracy is 62%. The fundamental accuracy from back tests and just success is 64% accurate. The technical analysis model is 55% accurate. We're internally, we've been working on a new model that currently is 76% accurate, accurate, which is pretty mind blowing. So basically, in essence, seven out of 10 times is going to be correct if it thinks a coin is going to go up. So we plan to launch that this month. So it'd actually be pretty cool for your audience to come check it out once we launch that. And this is 
fully automated. So this is so good in a way that we actually plan to have this replace the humans on our team. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. and, and so the humans will basically just focus on writing investment reports and doing actual analysis and everything can be fully automated because what happened in August and with the DeFi blow up, essentially, it was very tough to keep track of all these new coins as they're being added to these platforms like CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap. So right. we, we wanted a fully automated uh, automated way that would go through looking at over 50, 50 data points and find the best risk to reward investment or trade. And from now we've reached a point where we're, we're very confident based on our testing mm-hmm. that this is outperforming a good trader by over 20% and it's outperforming anything we have by over 10% that this is a good thing to introduce. So we plan to bring that this month. Uh, we'll, we'll also create an index around that. And the long-term vision for token metrics is to, in a way, do what Jim Simons did at, uh, at his fund, the Medallion Fund. For those who don't know, Jim Simons is the most successful hedge fund manager of all time on Wall Street. And he ushered in the quant revolution. He has a, through the lifetime of his fund, he's basically returned about almost 40% versus Warren Buffett's 20% annual returns. And this has been based purely from just machine learning and taking quantitative based models. So right now, token metrics, we look at about 74 different data points and we're working now on expanding this in the future to look at thousands. So bringing in equities, bringing in futures markets, bringing in macro indicators, bringing in data points like uh, unemployment, inflation, mm-hmm. housing, and really trying to take what a smart investor would, t- would, would do from both a, a macro perspective and a micro perspective and completely automate it. Because our, our thesis is that AI is the future and machine learning can look, look at so many more different data points and find the hidden patterns that a human can do. So that's kind of what we have. Now, then if you go to data, we also have the actual ratings for people who want to drill down and, and do their own research as opposed to following an index. So if you go here, this is similar to CoinMarketCap, but it's based on our grades. So we go through and we rate cryptocurrencies based on two approaches, one for a trader and one for a value investor. A trader is somebody who's day trading or swing trading. The most a trader will, would hold is probably a few weeks. And we tell you uh, these are the top coins right now in real time based on our analysis. I was going to say, I see you got uh, Ampleforth as uh, it's ranked third but the market cap is 107. That could be a uh, pretty big pretty yeah. big play for some people. The good trades are products that have a high token metrics ranking and a, a market cap lower than that. So there's a good arbitrage, meaning that this, we think it's undervalued today where it is versus where the current market, market cap is, for example. Yeah, I see Holochain and Matic. I talked about that yesterday. Yeah. Uniswap still scoring. So, okay, I got you. And then the next thing, uh, so if you just go back to the top, so click the filter on monthly TA trend, the monthly TA. Yeah, click that filter. Mm-hmm. Click very bullish and bullish filter. That's going to go through and filter just coins that have good TA. Right. So if somebody wants to trade purely based on TA, this goes through. With just two clicks, tells are in a bullish trend. Then scroll to the right. And then we also have price prediction as well. All right. So yeah. for instance, uh, let's look at Bitcoin's price predictions. So just go to the top search bar and just type in Bitcoin. And I click on Bitcoin. So the price predictions are also one of the most popular parts our customers use on token metrics. So we go through looking at just historical pricing. So this page is where we have more token details. So for, for people who want to go through the price predictions, the fundamentals, the technology, the TA, all that is here. Right, so let's go to price prediction, the second tab on the left. And this will go through and show where our models think Bitcoin is going uh, historically. So scroll down to the bottom, down to the bottom on the chart. Yeah, so this chart shows, so this is a rolling one month prediction. Basically, 30 days, it looks out 30 days in the future using the past historical price on Bitcoin. And it tries to build a model based on AI on where it thinks Bitcoin is going. So obviously it's not perfect. Well, I like this one uh, right here, Ian. I'll take 11.6. <laughs> October 26th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically predicting Bitcoin w- will go up, right? So everything is fully transparent. We log all the predictions down there, which shows past history. Now, the way to use this is don't just 
come here, say Bitcoin is going up in one month to that price and not come back again, right? Because this is a rolling price prediction with every new daily close in price that gets factored in into the next prediction. And so uh, the best way to use this is to probably check it two to three times a week just to see where the trend is going. So for example, after one week, there'll be one week worth of new pricing data that gets factored into the prediction that it makes for the next one month. Right, so if there's a big crash in Bitcoin, or if Bitcoin goes up and there's a huge rally, that those daily closes will be factored in as well. Got it. Interesting stuff. And then for if you want to look at like we talked about the actual project itself, so they're going through all the things. Of course, we're looking at data points inside here. But is there a part where it would talk about? Oh, let's just say polka dot. And there's like some data points in there that we could take a look at. Is that how it works or no? Uh, yeah. So type in polka dot at the top. Polka swap, polka dot. So we have the fundamentals page where our team goes through and looks at and basically does fundamental analysis, looking at the team, the background, the customers. Great. Um, then same thing with the technology. We have the code reviews there. So that is help, helpful for, for people who research. So this would be it, right? 84%. And then yeah. I guess here's the summary. And then you have something else here. Yeah, then the team. Then we have questions we typically like to ask, right? And we go through and we rate that. So the Polkadot is a very solid project all across the board, right? And that's why there's lots of interest in it. But for people who maybe who want to do their own research, we do have that available as well. So with the fundamentals and same thing with the, the technology. Got you. Okay. So this is where it all be. What, 10 proof of stake? Yes. Awesome. Okay. That would be that'd be good for something like me. I'm not a TA guy. I'm not a trader guy. I'm just a long-term investor. So this would be the thing for me. And of course, I always go for the stuff that I'm interested in. And uh, let's see how it works. But yeah. Okay. Anything else? Or is that pretty much... I mean, there's a lot of things to go over. And, you know, of course, we can't do it all, right? But yeah. uh, anything big that... Uh, anything else or... Uh, we do have discounted trials available, so anybody can try it out for seven days for anywhere between two bucks to five bucks, so pretty easy. Uh, then we also do offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So, if after the trial, you, after one month, you're unhappy, we'll, we'll refund your money, no questions asked, right? So, we want to make sure people who use the platform love the platform. Got it, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, I uh, yeah, thanks for letting me use it, I really appreciate it. And that is uh, pretty much it. And uh, I, so for everybody who's watching the video, I don't have a affiliate link. I have uh, I really nothing just to, to give you the, just go to app.tokenmetrics.com. Uh, this wasn't a, a paid promotion. It's just that Ian was gracious enough to come on and help us with that first question. So of course, I'm gonna talk about uh, his other project, which I gotta, I gotta tell you, I don't have time to look at all this stuff. I got three other businesses to run and uh, I would probably, if I wanted to look at this stuff, I would probably go this way. That's just how it is. All right, Ian, thanks so much. I appreciate it, man. And uh, we'll talk soon. All right, thank you. Right. It was a pleasure.